what is the best body graphics card in 2020. So if you're on the market for a new graphics card this year, and you want to build or upgrade your gaming PC, then I got you covered. A graphics card is the most essential part in any gaming PC and you can buy a mid-range CPU and a high-end graphics card and still maintain high resolutions and frame rates in virtually any game. Now, after my 15 years of building computers, I always like to start by asking what type of monitor you're planning on using and based on the resolution and refresh rate, I would pick a graphics card based on those facts. For example, if you're aiming for 4K and 60 or up to 120 FPS, you wouldn't buy a GeForce RTX 2060 Super or Radeon RX 5600 XT. My recommendation would instead land on Nvidia's RTX 2080 Ti. For any 1440p gamers playing at 144 to 165 Hz, then I would want to buy something like the GeForce RTX 2070 Super or the Radeon RX 5700 XT. Similarly, if your main type of games consist of eSport type of games like Overwatch, Fortnite, Call of Duty, League of Legends, or Rocket League, unless you're running these games at 4K over 120 FPS, you're simply not gonna need a 2080 Ti. Help me out here, let me know what is the best budget graphics card in 2020, what would you suggest? How to help you out and give you a much better idea what I'm talking about, we're gonna look at benchmarks for each card to give you an idea how big the performance difference is between each card on a game by game level. We're gonna start with entry level card first, then we're gonna move our way up to the high end category. Now in case you find anything you like, you find all cards mentioned in the video description down below and with that said, let's start with the entry level cards. Hey what is up guys, welcome to Arbin Hardware, my name is Robin, I'm your Swedish host and friend with bad posture and poor accent. So the cheapest gaming GPU Nvidia currently offers spells GT 1030, but it's quite frankly terrible for gaming so you wanna avoid that. That said, if you're able to find a second hand GTX 1050, that can actually be a pretty good deal. Now the 1050 comes in two variants, you wanna make sure you pick up the 4GB version. With that said, just over the $100 mark, you can also snag the RX 560 from AMD and that would be the unbeatable king around $100 and there is no question about it. Now if you are planning on building a completely new computer, picking up an APU, the Ryzen 3200G or possibly the 3400G which includes an RX Vega 8 or a Vega 11 graphics chip respectively, these are capable of running most eSport games at frame rates above 60 FPS and these APUs can also be a viable option. Keep in mind both the 2200 and the 2400G costs more than $100 but considering the fact that you're getting both a processor and a graphics chip on the same silicon can make it a pretty good deal if you want to get away cheap and you want to get started right away. Still, a Radeon 560 outperforms the built-in graphics Vega 8 by a flippin' ton. If you want to get away as cheap as possible, snagging a GTX 960 or a GTX 970 on second hand might be worth considering. In all honesty, I would highly recommend you to skip the $100 category completely if you're obviously if your budget allows it, as most of these cards perform pretty poorly in many modern games today, and these cards don't really offer the best price and value. Just take the GTX 970 as an example, you only got 3.5 gigabytes of fast GDR5 memory and nowadays in 2020 4 gigabytes of VRAM is already the bare minimum in many new AAA games. With that said, let's move on to mid-range, so let's jump up a bit to around $200. If you got your eyes on the green team, the GTX 1650 GD6 which stands for GDDR6 memory or the 1650 Super should be your first go to. Now the GTX 1650 recently got updated with faster graphics memory from GDDR5 to GDDR6. Roughly this is adding 4 to 6 more FPS stand against the older 1650 card. This GPU can be found for as low as 140 US dollars approximately and the super offering can be found for as low as 160 US dollars, making the latter one the perfect 1080p graphics card offering from Nvidia under $200. Now both cards do pretty okay in 1080p for the most part, but there is no denying that the super card performs better. Should also be said that the GTX 1650 performs similar to a GTX 1050 Ti, and so if you're able to find a cheap 1050 Ti, that can be a card worth considering. As for the red team right now, you can actually pick up the XFX Fatboy RX 590 for just about 179 US dollars. In terms of performance, the 590 is way faster than the 
1650 and it even beats the 1650 supercard in most games as well and the RX 590 performs fantastic in 1080p where in most cases you're able to run your games at the highest graphics preset without ever dripping below 60 FPS not very often let's move up a bit one of the cheapest touring based offerings from Nvidia without hardware accelerated ray tracing support is the GeForce GTX 1660 Super the big issue here is that the GeForce 1660 Super can be found for around 230 to 240 dollars now the much faster RX 5600 XT is only 290 while the 1660 Ti is 260 we're gonna look into this in just a second but if you got about 250 to 270 dollars I would definitely pick up the 5600 XT and with that said let's move up to mid-range up to 300 dollars with a budget of 300 dollars usually allows you to play at 1080p ultra or at 1440p with a bit lower graphic settings if you're able to find a GTX 1070 on the used market at 200 dollars that can be a pretty good deal but if you rather pick AMD a used RX 5700 is what you want to aim for another second hand card to consider would be the RX Vega 56 you can find it for sub 200 dollars it's usually a good deal and this card is pretty much neck and neck with the GTX 1660 Ti and it even beats the green team's card in a few games outer another great card would be the Radeon RX 5600 XT this is one of the most controversial graphics card launches ever with AMD throwing up a souped up BIOS to its partners at literally the last minute that aside with the faster out of the box performance of the RX 5600 XT makes this a great graphics card for anyone planning to play in 1080p 1440p and even 3440 by 1440p which is the most popular ultra wide format the 5600 XT is my favorite Navi based Radeon RX 5000 series graphics card especially when you consider that its original form had 6 gigs of VRAM at 12 gigabits provides a nice additional chunk of performance across the board as you can see and again this card also allows you to play at 1440p in some instances and it's an awesome graphics card for its money as for the green team VGA is selling the RTX 2060 KO for about 320 US dollars currently and what those $50 add is first and foremost the chance of enjoying DXR and ray tracing let's move up a notch to the sub 400 category starting at 350 US dollars you can snag the RX 5700 based on the RDNA architecture and 7 nanometer and in terms of performance well the RX 5700 is performing a bit better stand against a stock RTX 2060 at least for the most part and the RX 5700 also got two more gigs of VRAM which is also a nice bonus now the downside is the lack of ray tracing support which the RTX 2060 offers however having that said ray tracing does have a significant impact on the performance that's something that you want to consider adding about $50 to the price tag opens up another door worth considering if you got a 1080p or a 1440p or even an ultra wide monitor then the RTX 2060 Super is another kick ass offering from Nvidia it's got all the Nvidia technologies the other Turing based GeForce RTX graphics card offers and the Super cards also got 8 gigs of RAM and 8 gigs of RAM is definitely considered the sweet spot in 2020 and with this card you will cut through virtually everything at 1080p and 1440p and if you want to get into ray tracing and you want to be able to enjoy ray tracing well the super card together with the VGA KO model would be the cheapest way to go about it AMD's best GPU offering spells the Radeon RX 5700 XT starting at 369 US dollars powered by the Navi GPU architecture on 7 nanometer and these graphics cards are also packing 8 gigs of VRAM moving up a notch to high end and beyond $400 there is no denying that Nvidia still holds the crown when we're looking at the market for graphics card capable of running games in 4k with high refresh rates or high FPS count if you're playing on a free sync monitor and you don't want to consider a graphics card from the green team the RX 5700 XT can definitely still be a viable option keep in mind AMD still doesn't support hardware accelerated ray tracing with RDNA and we're gonna have to wait until RDNA 2 hit the shelves 
in Q4 in 2020. And so in the meantime, 4K high refresh rate, the RTX 2080, uh, the Super or the RTX 2080 Ti is the best available graphics card that you can find right now. If you don't want to spend a thousand dollars or more on the graphics card, the GeForce RTX 2080 Super offers great performance. You can actually find this model for about seven hundred dollars. You're still getting the RTX real-time ray tracing goodness as well as everything else Nvidia has to offer on the flagship Turing GPU, such as deep learning, super sampling 2.0. We got mesh shading, variable rate shading, etc. etc. This graphics card easily handled 1440p, we got 3440 by 1440p ultra wide, and even 4K, but you might want to dial down on some details, especially on the AAA games. Again, you can check out most of these cards listed down below, and if you have any questions, please let me know. Now watch either of these two videos to get to learn more, and I will see you over there. I want to thank you so much for sticking around this long, and I will catch you guys in the next one.